Hello, everyone. Welcome to another discussion in the SF Masterworks Reading Group. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing Lord of Light by Roger Zelazny. The SF Masterworks Reading Group is this group <laughs> uh, that meets and, and a few others who, uh, whenever they're able to join us, uh, who swipe books across the screen. That's our main attribute. <laughs> and also... <laughs> We read the SF Masterworks one every month in the order that they were published as Masterworks. Uh, so not the original publication order, the Masterworks publication order by Golangs. Uh, the next three books, if you'd like to join us for any of them, are uh, for March. It's going to be Fifth Head of Cerberus by Jean Wolfe. For April, uh, Gateway by Fred Frederick Pohl. And May is going to be The Rediscovery of Man by Corvina Smith. I think I have that correctly, but if not, I'll correct it next month. <laughs> uh, we have the wonderful group of people who join us usually for the discussion. Susanna, would you like to start us off with introductions? Hello, my name is Susanna Imaginario. I am the author of Timelessness, and I run a YouTube channel called Den of the Weird. Hi, I'm Jared. I uh, run the Fantasy Thinker YouTube channel, and uh, also posts an occasional blog on pagechewing.com. Nice. Hi, my name's Chris Mullen. I run a YouTube channel as well. I post in the PageTune forum. I'm part of a podcast called Speckless Speculations with some of the lovely people on here as well. And yes, I think that's my love as well. Nice. So I think I'd like to start with a general question. I am super familiar with all the names on in this book uh, and all the gods. Some of it was confusing, like I was telling Susanna earlier that um, we saw uh, different people for Vishnu and Krishna or different people for Rudra and Shiva. They're all like they're the same God, different aspects of them. So like some of that was confusing and I had to keep reminding myself that these are God, these are people, not gods. But I, I'm curious how it read for you uh, in terms of like the vast <laughs> number of Hindu gods we meet. Uh, on these pages? Well, I know very little of Indian mythology. So I was quite lost with all the names, and especially since every camera seems to have three or four of them. And uh, uh, But I loved it because I, I was curious to learn more about it, and I loved the structure of the book. And, you know, if anyone read my stuff, who would understand why? I mean, I wish I would read. Uh, I would have read this before I wrote my own, because this is exactly the same sort of madness. The prose is different, but uh, exactly the same sort of madness. And I was delighted to just be be confused, and I can't wait to go and investigate all this because now I want to know all about it. And I, I was, I was really happy with this book. <laughs> nice, yeah, and I, I have read. Uh three and a half of your books and I like I, I was I was, I was telling you earlier too that this feels a lot like your books but what you're trying to do with like technology and uh magic except the technology is more recognizable in Susanna's books but yeah Chris what did you think uh, my first line in my notes my extensive notes and I mean this is this is a complex book full of mythological deity references much of which is completely lost on me which is why I started taking as much extensive notes as it did because I found that it really really helped in terms of writing down chapter by chapter for me to actually come to the next chapter and go that person is also that person even before they actually tell me you sort of know by the context of who they're talking to and how they're speaking to them that actually mm. said art is exactly the same as sam is exactly the same as the binder for instance and then when it got to later on and they started using the gods as as rules rather than actual people so when mm. they replaced uh shiva etc and brahma um then it it actually didn't matter but that's just because i had sort of recorded it and sort of read it de deeply enough Mm. To the point that I that I kind of forced myself to take stock of who was who, and therefore it never really it appeared, which is uh, I, it makes me wonder how. Like I've seen people read this in two days. If you don't know the mythology and read it in two days, I am not sure how you, how you could follow it because I I mm. that definitely was not me. I had the kind of it didn't read slowly, but read a bit, take stock. And then, as probably Susanna was talking about a little bit there, it prompts curiosity. It prompts you to do a quick Google on things. It prompts you to kind of go and look and see, actually, 
this person has come up again and again. Is this a real thing, or was this, you know, was this an actual person uh, mm -hmm. within, within the mythology? And uh, often you, that created another level of depth to the characters that wasn't even on the page, which was just great. Yeah, yeah. I I, I did think though that with each aspect that was introduced, none of it relied on foreknowledge of what this god is or what this aspect is. I thought that there was a little tag somewhere that said, this is the god of so-and-so. So you know what role I suppose that they're meant to play in the story. And then you also have this added depth. <laughs> if you know the mythology, then I suppose you can read more into it. But I, I, I suppose it's possible potentially to do a surface level reading with just like even with just that, I feel like there's a lot that you can get out of the story. What about what about you, Jared? Yeah. yeah, no, it was it was very interesting for me. I I, uh, I was a little familiar with with uh, with uh, Hindu Hindu mythology and um, and Buddhism as well because I've I've read a lot about um, you know I've recently completed a history of India book a little while back and so i was i was familiar with a lot of the terms and stuff like that but even then some of the um some of the names and some of the aspects even are, are can be kind of fluid at times mm -hmm. um even in even in history <laughs> so uh and so it made complete sense that you had six or seven names just for just for sam you know mm -hmm. um and that that Idiot. tracks that tracks with actual historical stuff that you know there's a lot of names for for the buddha out there and um so it you know it took a while to get into that and there were some parts of the book where it was like okay i'm a little bit lost right now but uh you know you just keep reading and the the prose is pleasant mm. uh, so it it it's you know it's it's uh it's kind of lyrical in a way and kind of pleasant to read and so you you get into the rhythm of reading it and the names the names fall into place after a while and you start you start figuring out who's who and uh and uh, I, I really like how he put all that together because um it, it it was uh it made it a pleasant read even if you were confused about exactly what was happening uh mm. you you eventually got into it and I have a feeling that if you went back and started reading this again, uh, you you would you would get that feeling of oh okay all right I remember this from before and now it makes a little more sense. But even then, I think you could still get a little bit lost in places. <laughs> yeah. Even on a even on a reread, you could because uh, there's a lot of like you said, Vasha. There's a lot of little subtleties in there that he he gives little hints along the way, and. And he gives little hints about um, identity, mm. um, and uh, and he also gives all those nifty little hints about technology too. That yeah. if you don't catch those, it's just a fantasy story. But if you catch them, it's yeah. also it's also goes into science fiction. You know, so it's yeah. really neat how he did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to read it again. It's definitely a book that was meant to be reread, mm -hmm. uh, which is the sort of book I love. And because uh, I'm, I'm sure I missed loads. You know, the little aside, yeah. it oh, took yeah. me a while. I mean, I love the the start, very strong start. The, that first mm -hmm. uh, paragraph is is brilliant, and then it kind of. I, know, I was getting too confused. I think what the hell is going on? Uh, I'm not sure about mm -hmm. this. Yeah, yeah. And then it suddenly clicked it's one of the books you have to persevere and before you know it once you have the when, when you are in that wavelength i don't know in that, that the, the mindset then you start picking up in the in those character traits and even in, in oh it's so good i'm gonna have to read it again <laughs> proper immerse so, reading so yeah. much of the chapter felt like there was some kind of lyrical setup some sort of description but yeah, just about in every chapter, there was a couple of key conversations between two characters, mm. really. And a lot of the the ideas and a lot of the conversation, a lot of the, the joy that really came from those really lengthy conversations where they kind of poked at each other a lot of the time about ideologies and, and that kind of stuff and about what a god should be doing, what a god shouldn't be doing. And by the time you'd got two chapters in, you were like, 
this is going to be fine. Like there's there's a bit of exposition here to start for set the scene for where we are in the world, what's happening. And, you know, I had to get over the fact that every time I thought a character was dead, I was like, but they're not dead. Um, <laughs> constantly, you can't constantly, kill constantly. the god of death. <laughs> I, can't, I can't kill him. I can't kill him. I can't kill him. And then we find out that sometimes the cheated death and all the rest of it. So I haven't reset the scene, but then to get to those character moments or those bits where the conversations were happening and then going, right, get my pen ready to take notes. We're going mm. again. Yeah, and I, I love how they would just test themselves in this casual way. Let me see if I could try to kill him today. See how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so much. To, it must have been real, really fun to write. And uh, in the end, like you said, there's a lot of dialogue. Most of the book is dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's just them talking banter more than anything. Just, just talking at it. And I, I love that. You know, just uh, I, I, I could have used some a little bit more dialogue tags. Uh, sometimes I have to reread. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was talking yes. now. <laughs> it was, but, but yeah. I've I've read a couple of reviews where people complained that there was a lot of talking and uh, and it's like why are you complaining about this is this mm -hmm. is great this yep. <laughs> it's all about talking. But combine the lack of dialogue talks with actually the different names that everybody had and sometimes you weren't able to actually place somebody until like three pages into the conversation mm -hmm. even yeah. uh, that it was Sam or that it was it was somebody else because of the the way that they've been introduced and even. Like even the one human character, Robin here, even he gets a cha name change because he takes on Buddh Buddhism at the part, and you're like, what, 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 <laughs> what is happening there? Yeah. Oh yeah. The Sugata thread. Yeah, right? real yeah. Too, yeah. 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 I I think the one. Maybe I'm jumping too far ahead. Let's let's start with the first chapter. So before that, there's another general-ish question I have to the group. The uh, I read somewhere. It might have been a Goodreads review that this was actually a short story, a set of short stories that have been stitched together to read as a novel. Mm -hmm. Did did any of you pick up on that or did it feel like that to you? Like each chapter, I, I, I found that out when I was just reading the first chapter, I think. So I could see how like each chapter is self-contained and could be a separate story, but did it did you get that impression? Like these, there's a bunch of stitched together, disconnected stories somehow? I, uh, I kind of. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I mean it is a bit dis disjointed at parts. I mean the the yeah. time jumps and, but I I, I figured that was intentional. Mm. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was intentional. <laughs> yeah, and 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 it might have been in the larger scheme of things. Right? Like it, short stories, also serve as a way to serialize larger, uh, connecting mm -hmm. threads. I suppose. I but I think it. it it was something that I didn't know was happening initially. You know, when you got the chapter one, chapter two, again, you're thinking one event's going to roll into another one. And then you've got that moment of, oh, this this isn't just after he's been captured or something. This is this is a good bit after that. You know, the event, a lot of events have happened here in the in interim. And once again, once you got into the rhythm that that was what was happening all the time, because it doesn't telegraph it in any way. It doesn't mm -hmm. kind of uh, time stamp it or anything to say, oh, a few moments later or whatever uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I it. But, but it it wasn't like it was hard to read that you know but it, it didn't take long for you to kind of work out all oh, right okay we're just mm. we're, we're a bit forward without it having to tell you like again that kind of idea of respecting the reader enough to kind of go look i don't need to signpost this completely mm. yeah just kind of do yeah. this that's a good point chris because i i think uh i think zelazny in this case had a lot of respect for the reader um it, he let us figure a lot of stuff out on our own without mm -hmm. slamming it over our heads saying this is this is what it is and yeah. there was a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of those instances especially when you went to the next chapter and there was in some cases it was like you know decades late like 50 yeah. years mm -hmm. later or something like that and you kind of had to figure that out you kind of had to work that out through the dialogue and through what new circumstances mm -hmm. were happening at that time and i really appreciated that actually yeah yeah, but there's a lot of people who don't like that. Um, True. <laughs> they, yep. they, yeah, uh, I love it. That that's why I write the way I write. But um, I, I I like having to put the puzzle together. I like I like to go and investigate. To go and uh, you know, I like not knowing things. You know, oh, my phone is ringing. Sorry, I'll shut up. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, 
I guess we could go chapter by chapter unless we need to jump back and forth to talk about any specific subject. So we start with this. Uh, I love the epigraphs, by the way. Like, I think the first chapter sort of sets the st tone for the structure for what each uh, chapter is going to look like. It, it doesn't change. There's the epigraph uh, that tells us what is going to happen <laughs> essentially in this chapter or someone someone's interpretation some future person's interpretation of the events that transpired here it seems like and then a quote uh, it seems those seem to be translations from the hindu text but i don't know it uh, i could be wrong about that but yeah so i i couldn't always tell how the two were related but um, yeah we can talk about that but also the events in the first chapter are Yama <laughs> wields a prayer uh, machine to bring Siddhartha back in his body and then things happen <laughs> let's discuss <laughs> mm. yeah uh, it, 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 well they seem to have the, the uh, this this these mechanisms to, to bring consciousness back into a body. Um, and it seems to relate specifically to these, you know, these first people um, who, you know, now know themselves as gods. And uh, it, it wasn't really clear. It wasn't very clear it, when I was first reading the, the first chapter that that's exactly what they were doing. Um, so I was I was kind of in a, in a little bit of state of confusion during that first chapter, and you know I figured it out later, but uh, but I was like, okay, what's going on here? And um, so that you know the first chapter, that's what I got out of it is that there is you know there is that's he he was kind of explaining the setup of of what these people do. These people want to be gods who have who are wielding technology with, with that have that, uh, that's godlike power basically, mm -hmm. uh, um, which is, uh, which is hilarious. I, I think there was even like later on in the book, there was even like, um, uh, kind of, it kind of it seemed like he was hinting at the power of these gods was is equivalent to like the power of some, you know, like a, atomic energy or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. in, in our world today and um but that's just kind of what the setup was to me uh to start out with yeah it's funny because as much as i have lots of notes for other chapters i have just for the first chapter that we're rep we're presented that the gods are sort of omniscient in the world they could take on any form they could be animal they could be humanoid they could they could be anything they basically decide on what way that they present themselves to each, to each other, which I think is a theme that comes up in the next couple of chapters as well. This idea that they, the form that they present to other people is very important to them, regardless of you know their what's happened to them. They've reached this other place as gods, install themselves as gods, but actually how they show themselves to each other and their past relationships, like because nobody really dies, you kind of see the same people again and again. Um, yeah. It, it's something there but there's an awful lot of setup with an awful lot happening in the first kind of set other than we get introduced to a few characters like tack etc that kind of stuff the archivists so. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i i love the idea of how their attributes you know their their special talents would eventually come through um even though they change the body the body would eventually start to resemble what they really mm. were and how the the powers would manifest uh that that's, that's yeah amazing because that helped us rec rec recognize who the character was mm. just those little hints once you pick up on that you know, because it wasn't explained at the beginning there's something we learned later on and it was like oh yeah yeah I'm picking up on this and, yeah yeah i i love the what's the right word to use is it symbolism allegory metaphor of All yama of, <laughs> of no yama the god of death being the one who made weapons more and more powerful weapons that help kill and destroy the planet i guess like you're bringing about death so he's the god of death i i really i it wasn't immediately obvious to me like how what a genius move that was but i appreciated it a lot more towards the ends of the book yeah 
Plus, at the very, very start, we're the very first thing we're done is introduced to this main our main character, mm. who you have to be Sam, um, and this phrase that appears constantly throughout the book. The his followers called him Maha Samatman mm. uh, and said he was a god. He preferred to drop the Maha and the Atman, however, and called himself Sam. He never claimed to be a god, but then he never claimed not to be a god, which is used numerous times throughout the text. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and we go. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, that kind of that kind of relates to Buddhism in a way because. Buddhism is not really a Buddha is not really a god, but a lot of people worship him in in, in a godlike way sometimes, and so it's it 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 straddles that uh, that mid between that Sam was actually explaining, and it's pretty mm. uh, brilliant that way. Yeah. yeah, and in a much later chapter, there is this discussion of what a god is. I think it's Yama. Oh, I have it marked. I loved it. <laughs> it's folded, written on. <laughs> what, 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 what way have you marked it? Folded, no. written on. <laughs> a dagger through it? No. Page 161. But then you can't see the words. <laughs> In blood. <laughs> Just a highlight <laughs> with uh, red. 161. There we go. It, it falls open. Mm. 161. Uh, yes. God, I, it is more than a name. That, that, that part. Yeah. 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 It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Being a God is being able to recognize within oneself these things that are important and then to strike the single note that brings them into alignment with everything else that exists. So, like, mm -hmm. basically, it's like you have to have the audacity to think that you're a God and then you're a God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love when he goes, being a god is the quality of being able to be yourself to such an extent that your passions correspond with the forces of the universe. Mm. This this is this is exactly my sort of uh, of, of madness for time <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, uh, but to, it, it, it did it so much better. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Second edition, uh, <laughs> Susanna. But the thing about the God and their definition of the God actually, again, is another one of those things that I felt popped up an awful lot of times. They do not, or they represent Godhood and the things that they do in not doing God-like things, if that makes sense. Mm. So they, it's almost like being a God, they are bored. They have been reborn and done this enough lot of time, and all they can find to do is mess and kind of tinker and play and create yeah. like mankind or whatever as, as a toy. And even their interrelationships, playing with each other, to kind of devilment, you know, just to alleviate the boredom of kind of living for yet forever for themselves. Mm. And I thought that old thing was like eternally fascinating, especially when you contrast with what Sam is actually trying to do to change the whole system and, and why do it and because. We then support Sam as the reader quite clearly, you know, as yeah. being you know our hero yeah. in a lot of ways. <laughs> Even though he's 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 a trickster, he's a he's a character full of devilment. You couldn't trust the thing that he does. Yet, yeah, exactly. We're on his side. He, he, he's all preaching, you know, in favor of humanity and and development and, and all that. And at at the end of this long explanation of what a god is, uh, I thought it was brilliant. And then the first thing he says is, "So they play that on their fascist banjos, eh?" <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> After she was reading, I was like, oh, delighted in London, and then boom, just drops it there. And you just realize, yeah, okay, I guess it could yeah. be seen that way, but, <laughs> but what you're doing is not exactly that different. You know, is he's just trying yeah. to impose his will on, on the world. It's just that his will is not the same will as the others. Mm. Yeah. Right in this, the second chapter, the beginning of the second chapter, we get we get that sense that Sam's attempting to do something different because mm. he says he says that um he's gonna stop attending the old council meetings he stopped <laughs> attending them uh, you know a century ago because they were lengthy sessions calculated to postpone decision making and uh, <laughs> i thought that was brilliant and and uh so and of course whoever he was talking to there was accusing him of being the accelerationist and i i love that term that was just brilliant <laughs> and uh, so and he was like no i'm just curious you know <laughs> and, uh so it's just the way he was going about his revolution so to speak was just it's it was like 
casual and yet mm -hmm. subtle and insidious at the same time. And it was mm -hmm. just, uh, it was, it, it made it so, uh, it, so it had a, you know, there was that humor to it that just made mm -hmm. you want to keep reading and, and, and just find out what this guy is going to come up with next. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it was the fact that each chapter was sort of self-contained and whatever, but there's this distance to this character that makes it feel like what you said, Jared, that what he's going about is also casual. Like, yeah, he's trying to, uh, it becomes apparent about chapter five that he's uh, trying to bring about a revolution, change the way things are and stop oppression uh, the way he sees it. And well, like the gods have their reasons. They seem to be selfish reasons for not sharing their technology with everyone else. But and they have this messed up this promotion system <laughs> of rebirth and changing your cast and so on. Uh, Chris, do you want to? Uh, I was going to say, Justin, that they have the reasons, but it's based on the idea that a cataclysmic event has happened in their old world and mm. technology was the ruination of the thing. So they are trying to prevent that happening again. But yet they say that they are just going to make sure that things happen naturally. Mm. But then Sam's point is, and this is where he kind of tries to shine a light on them to say, but you are erasing natural advancements. The printing press has been, mm. been invented numerous times here. Uh, and actually, I have to say, I love that. By, the time I get, by the time we get to chapter six and they're talking about the toilet, I mean, that's just bloody hilarious. Like, uh, uh, yeah. properly hilarious. It's like, uh-oh, somebody invented a bicycle. The world's going to go to hell. <laughs> But that whole conversation between Sam and Brahma, I think, again, is incredibly illuminating because, again, these are two characters that have known each other for centuries, millennia, whatever you want yeah. to do. And yet when Brahma's getting ready to meet Sam, he dresses himself up in the most extravagant jewels and kind of this kind of show of this is who I am. I'm important. I'm more important than you. And so the the kind of levels between these two people is shown to be that Sam's sort of oppressed, even though he's, he's, he's also a god, mm. which is funny how that all plays out, actually, further down the line, you know, about, yeah. about how they yeah. redress that balance and how, how he, he, get, he messes with that whole natural order. Mm. Yeah. And the Brahma thread was also interesting because uh, in, in the second chapter when... Uh, <laughs> to your point about the gods being bored and also i guess just the subtle bit of world building there if you will uh this <laughs> apparently brahma used to be female and now has a male body and wants mm -hmm. to be admired for their physicality and not for being a god <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> brahma just wants to be appreciated for his body <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> Deep down. So I, I just made myself this muscular body. I didn't do anything to work for it. But now <laughs> these 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 women are dying for me, but not because I look muscular, but because I'm a girl. <laughs> no, it's interesting that, you know, and, and then she or he was complaining that the, the women in the harem they weren't paying attention. And I was like, well, if you were a woman, you should have known what women do pay attention to. <laughs> Why would you chose that body? <laughs> uh, I, I imagined something, you know, like like bodybuilder, but still very effeminate. Um, mm. So yeah, that, that would not work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was hilarious. But also just, I think with that bit of exposition, if you will, um, he showed us what the cycles of body can do, that the consciousness is fluid and it can go into any body and maybe it, it, you're not like super tied to that individual body. But And, and to your point, Jared, about the accelerationist mo movement, they, they never explicitly explained that this is what it is, except in that one paragraph that talk, talks to another person. I forget her name, but... Uh, is it Maya? Yeah, <clears throat> I think Tuck explains to Maya uh, what the accelerationist movement is, but you understand it from context much before that, yeah. which is also, I think, really well done, like the whole trusting the reader aspect of it. Yeah. But 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 also, I went down 
such a YouTube hole with accelerationism. Like, I uh, just uh, I, I read a post upon read a post upon read a post. Then I found a Guardian article, which I'll actually have to link to everybody, that goes in about how the actual advent of modern accelerationism started from this book. This 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 book started that entire conversation. I was like, what? Get shut the front door because i think I, I talked about when we were reading this uh with jared a little bit basically saying like it's not very scientific at all like there, there's barely any side oh, yeah. it's very high fantasy in a lot of ways but in in terms of ideas and the things that i was doing it's probably the most sci-fi book in terms of like taking real like creating a new uh mode of, of thinking and then projecting that out in fictional form to then people to go on ahead and look and see actually oh that's what's happening now and you can take the lessons that are that are in here like uh, i mean the acceleration of this movement is basically creating ai and the fact that everybody's sort of embracing AI, the capital world is embracing ai but it actually could end up being the death of it because mm -hmm. the, that's how accelerationism kind of works and thinks and just like going as, as with loads of these books are going my head is just exploded <laughs> that somebody in 1967 that had this in a couple of pages of a book and then it's become this whole other thing to explain what's happening in, in society like 80 years later and it's like oh you know whatever yeah. and and how you went about it like so far we books we've read with you no know, great ideas and you know they were all kind of even the stars my destination which was a bit out there but it was always presented in a kind of serious way you know yes. very uh, scientific uh, you know the, and he it just it just ran with it it's just you know it made it fun again some people mm -hmm. might disagree um but it it, it was very lighthearted you, you only when you actually stop and you know if you stop each day and then think about it and realize oh you know there's there's a lot more in here than than just banter between old friends and uh, that that was genius yeah 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 i agree i <laughs> i love the um the description of uh the uh entrance to um to to hell what, what do they call it here hell hell well, mm. hell well yes. says, there's a there's a sign on it that says go away <laughs> It's not the place to be. If you try to enter here, you will fail and be cursed. If you somehow succeed, uh, then don't complain that you entered unwarned or bother us with your deathbed prayers. Signed, the gods. <laughs> that was a f I like laughed out loud when I, saw it. I read that. <laughs> They're oh. so playful. But they, they're just like bored children. Like, honestly, it's not that kind of thing. Right? Yeah. We'll have to make a sign. Who wants to? I'll make a sign. Leave it with me. I write the sign, <laughs> and then, then they go put it up. It says, "Right, the sign's done, guys. What's next? You know, print and press the Get rid of it. I'll do that." <laughs> no, so funny. It, yeah. And uh, you know, and of course, these, 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 the demons of hell are like these elementals, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it, just the way that the the head elemental, I forget his name. Um, Taraka. Yeah. Taraka. Yeah. Yeah. The, the way he, every time he saw a god, he's like, I can take him. Yeah, it's like that kind of thing in somebody's else head, little Jiminy Cricket. You know, there's really serious conversations <laughs> happening with track in the background, and he's like zooming it all out, going, Fire, eh? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's a challenge. But... <laughs> oh, that's that's real light. Oh, that's, uh -huh. uh, yeah. I can take it. <laughs> Consumed by this idea, this macho kind of idea of like, I've got to prove that I'm stronger than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's so much of that. Like, uh, it's like for what appears in the service to be like a super serious take on this like epic high fantasy and all the rest of it. There's just lots of little bits yeah. of like poking fun at itself, uh, which okay. I think just make, makes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, even in the first chapter, uh, is it? Yeah, Tuck uh, wonders. Er, er, they all wonder where the heck Siddhartha or Sam is getting up to every evening when he doesn't come back for days at a time. Tuck follows him, and it turns out he's gambling with a bunch of demons. <laughs> Regular. <Right. laughs> <laughs> of all the me. things you could be doing. Double <laughs> 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 down. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> like, even even the stupid stuff, like the stuff that's written very, very clearly, when tax turned into an ape and to be an ape for eternity, and then the next chapter somebody's talking to him and they goes, why are you still deciding to be an ape? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I kind of fancy it, and it's like this very decreed kind of thing, and he's like, oh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll not be an ape next time, I'll be fine. <laughs> and he's like, well, look what I can do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I can spy on me, he's like, it gives me superpowers, you know? It's really... I can go branch to branch. <laughs> so much humor in it, it's really, really unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, um, oh god. So, so Mickey, actually back I, I... back back in topic, I was gonna say the um the sequence where Sam is getting his new body. So and he's a bit worried of trusting anybody, and so he creates the kind of the thing and then finds out <laughs> the body gets brought back to, to him and he says, Oh, they were they were they were actually going to put me in a real body and then it turns out the person was that left like, I thought I knew it uh, and, and it, it goes to show how smart Sam was like that's mm. one of the very clearest indications that he actually is playing chess while everybody else is playing drafts kind of kind of thing mm. playing checkers you know that he's kind of a step ahead of everybody at all times which is showing again and again and mm. again throughout the whole book you know so I, I don't know if you read if you guys read the at the end, the the little uh, note by George R. R. Martin mm. about that, you know, about the the epilepsy. Ah, uh, the that scene. Mm -hmm. I, I can't pronounce the word now. So uh, and the pun the in the pun. scene, which I completely missed, and I was like, "What pun? What pun?" And then I had to go and search it, and I was like, "Oh yeah." What, what, and um, apparently, that, that he wrote the book just just to put in that. He thought of the and pun, like... and then he wrote, decided to write the book. Um... <laughs> oh, wow, <well. laughs> there's a little bit more than that, but it's a very good pun. You catch cats. So... I don't Should want to misquote it, so I'm just going to like it. Yes, it, oh, there it is. I found it. Yeah, yeah. You go for it, Susanna, since you brought it up. You know, I the, missed the, it. The, I missed the it. Fit so hit the, the shan. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> then the fit hit the shan. It's so good. <laughs> Again, I more like, okay, how, how many more I missed? I need to go and check. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't doubt if there was quite a bit. <laughs> the, the whole oh, mythology, Hindu mythology, and all the rest of it goes right. We'll write this book around it. In, in the context <laughs> of that scene, yeah, that was exactly what happened. It's just, I think he, he spells it all out in just very weird ways. <laughs> But it, it does make me wonder, because apparently Zelazny, Zelazny was asked and offered a lot of money to write a sequel to this for many, many years, and he, yeah. he, he flat out refused to do it. And I, I can sort of see why, because it's sort of perfect in its own little way. Like, what else do you do that's not more of the same, if you know what I mean? Where do you actually take it? And you have this piece of art that's just magnificent in its own way that begs to be reread like like a lot like we've all kind of said so it can be it's it can be its own thing which is which is amazing yeah 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 that uh this uh i mean that need for sequel um that that some people have to me um it might lessen it if it might yeah. lessen mm -hmm. this book if there's a sequel to it um i mean you could probably say that about a lot of stuff that that did have a successful sequel too, but um, you know, I, but I think in this case, this is this is quite unique. I, I've never read anything like this, yeah. and I wouldn't want to see somebody try to just imitate this again in a different form. Like, what would you do? You know, it, it just to me, it doesn't seem like something that's viable with this with this book. You know. But it potentially changes the whole conversation from being about just this, what's in these pages, to being about a series then, which you have to get ups and downs. Like, people can't talk about a Game of Thrones TV series anymore where they're talking about, you know, the end of that, for instance. Yeah. Th that is part of the, the that whole conversation. People can't have the conversation just about the good parts. It has to be about mm. the whole thing. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, that was... One... Sorry, go ahead, Susanna. Oh, I, there's definitely material to write, you know, to keep writing. That's the same when, when you write about mythology, you never run out of things to write about. It. But it would diminish the the book, I think. If, if, it, if it, Even if it was longer than it is, it would start, you know, it would be too much. I think it's, yeah. it's exactly the right length and the... Because, if, yeah, if it was like 600 pages of this, you know, it would probably be like, okay, I've 
by by the the fifth other page will be like I'm 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 done. I don't need to know anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it was right to just leave it as it was. Yeah, yeah, because it's 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 um the uh i mean the the basic plot of the the bat you know that led up to the battle at the end um it's not very plot focused it has that basic plot yeah. but the rest of it is is you know that uh that exploration of this society this technological society acting as a mythological society and and uh that was the point of it really you know and the the absurdity of it all mm. you know is mm -hmm. is really the the focus and uh so i think trying to ex like you said expanding it into a you know 600 page me mega novel it wouldn't have worked it wouldn't have been the same it wouldn't have had that same absurd impact that it does mm -hmm. but it's also sort of like completely genius taking this mythological devil society you know which was hinduism where people worship gods how do you fuss and break with that down? You create a new religion, i.e. Buddhism, that doesn't have a figurehead of a god, but is all about reaching enlightenment or various stages of enlightenment, which is not something that any of them can control. And only having one person in the entire book get there, and he offers himself up to be killed. You know, it's in, in this kind of macho kind of thing. I could take him, but he knows he's going to die kind of thing. But, you know, the whole thing's, like, phenomenally smart. And, and and why that was a threat to the gods and why they felt that this had to be yeah. pushed down and suppressed in whatever mm -hmm. way that they could. Yeah, and he didn't mm -hmm. even completely get there. He yeah. said, oh, I just made that stuff up and other people followed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. There's more irony on irony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it almost felt like he was... It, I read Envy into the initial interaction between him and Sugata when Sugata is almost teaching him at this point. But I think maybe it's just admiration <laughs> that mm. you got to where I couldn't. Uh, but, but I did want to say on the subject of expanding the scope of the book that it is, I, I agree that it is perfect as it is, but there's one thing that I thought it could have maybe benefited a bit from, but I don't know how you would add it without really maybe changing the whole thing is we have these gods all of them including sam who think they know what is good for the people and we never see any of the people <laughs> and what their daily life is at least as far as chapter six i we don't and i i doubt the chapter seven changes that drastically so i i don't I, I think that would have been an interesting perspective about like what it is that the people want, how happy are they or not. And 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 I think that would have helped me understand whether Sam is just one an additional person. Like what I was saying earlier that maybe I didn't finish was that Sam also the gods seem to be bored like the other gods quote unquote are bored so they are doing these random like playing you're know, using the people on the planet as a play thing but is sam also the same <laughs> is he also just bored and wants to bring about revolution for the sake of it or is he actually going to help people with whatever he does we don't know that because we don't know anything about what the people actually want and maybe the point is it doesn't matter. Maybe the larger point is if you have these entities who are making decisions for the larger collective, let's analyze whether that makes sense uh, in and of itself. But um, yeah, that, that was, I, I felt like a bit of a missing piece for me. Yeah. No, the, the people wanted toilets at some point. It was quite the first thing they wanted. Toilets, uh, toilets and trashy magazines. That's, that's all they yeah, wanted. Pretty much. <laughs> bicycles, but, uh, bicycles. Bicycles, yeah. Bicycles, yeah. I, I did get the impression that, you know, he was just trying to mess with the other gods to this not so much help the people but dismantle the whole you know, pantheon, uh, that 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 whole system. You know, let the people help themselves because the gods weren't helping; they were hindered them. So it just pretty much let let them figure things out. It wasn't set up to help. Yeah. Mm. I think that was a point of the accelerationist movement was mm -hmm. to let the people help themselves. Um, 
because the gods the gods weren't helping them they were just doing their own thing it, it it's kind of interesting because the the um the gods do mention they're, they're raising the armies and stuff from the people and they mention the the various cities that they're going to lose but they mention more like chess pieces than they do uh you know caring about whether the cities survive or not and uh <clears throat> so like yeah like you said they're they're just using them they're using everything they're using it's all mm -hmm. a big game and uh yeah you're right you, you don't really get that mm -hmm. that peasant probably yeah, but, but, but it's quite a vicious game because at some point we, we learned that the people are their descendants because throughout the years and the different bodies they just kept procreating mm -hmm. so the, they're actually their great 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 grandsons and mm -hmm. and even that wasn't enough to make them care that mm -hmm. that was it was like wow <laughs> if, if if that's not god like i don't know what it is but, uh, so uh, like all of Sam's actions in the first couple of chapters are about showing why the system is broken. For instance, mm -hmm. you know, that the fact that these these daddies are bored, that they, that they sort of have caught up in their own thing. Even the bit about him them using the epileptic body. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was gods. They were just doing that to be spiteful. I mean, they, they, he's yeah, shown he them as being spiteful gods and, and being judgmental and kind of not really caring. And I think if you were genuinely bored, you would think that there'd be more than one of them going, well, actually it does have them because Yama comes to that realization later on to basically say, our time is done here. You know, we, we aren't really doing anything with this time. We're not doing anything with these powers mm. other than squabbling and kind of picking fun with each other and kind of turning him into an ape and turning, you know, there's not really nothing happening. There's time for something else. And then the idea of accelerationism is just, we need to speed up this process in some way so whatever's next gets the chance to come next whether it's buddhism or whatever it else it is you know? yeah if you're not helping speed it up at least stop interfering when yeah. it happens right yeah yeah and it is also that there there was also a genuine concern too that they wouldn't be reincarnated properly and that uh you know they could end up as a as an actual ape or something or a mouse or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. um, there, there was concerns about that. Uh, so I, I wonder if, um, you know, I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly how much that played in because they had those masters of karma, um, mm -hmm. that they had to be concerned about as well. And I think didn't, didn't one of the gods like attack that temple or something that had the masters in it. It was Sam, wasn't it? It was after, Sam, yeah. Yeah, after he got the bad turn that they were going to give him the epileptic body. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah so th there That's were, there, yeah. <laughs> there were some some threats to their existence, not not yeah. uh, mm -hmm. not just, uh, they weren't playing with a, uh, you know, a, just, uh, just a play. Mm. But, but again, great humor in that scene where Sam does do the standoff and basically starts wrecking the gardens as if that's actually important. You know, I, I want to speak to somebody. Oh, he's not here. Right. I'm just going to start wrecking the place. And then and yeah. then all of a sudden that was important enough for them to go, right, OK, they're here. You know, and, and fraternal beings or otherwise, that just seems a bit <laughs> a bit strange, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they had very <laughs> basic concerns. I I I. I, I don't think I quite understood how the karma thing worked, but I got the impression that they weren't so much worried about dying or going to you know, just being, you know, uh, incorporeal. They just they, they didn't want to be, you know, in a in a base body or an animal body. They didn't want to go back to being just human. They they were more concerned with the with the loss of power than the loss of life because they 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 took their their mm. life for granted you know their, their, their souls were already eternal somehow you know they just keep being transferred he was you know spending you know 50 years as a as a horse or a or buffalo or whatever that such an inconvenience you know <laughs> yeah. mess with that and you can't end it early because suicide counts against you <laughs> so exactly <laughs> the, i didn't fully understand what they kept referring to real death i does that mean you don't get a body or you don't get reincarnated anymore? What was that? And where do you go if that happens? Because they've sort of established that 
consciousness is some like energy with some form in it like especially with the rakshas um so yeah i think yeah did it was a brahma who actually made that decision which is why he was killed first and there was that period that he couldn't bring himself back then you know when he was poisoned and they said actually life will end if we don't replace brahma immediately it mm. seems like brahma's role was in the reincarnation system and so he was actually killed and was it shiva was the other one so the two of them were killed and they were killed properly because they had nobody in place at that stage mm. to bring the bodies back or reactivate right. the, the, the karma system. And so they had to be replaced then with Kali and whoever, whoever else, you know? Because yeah. Mm. And that was interesting because they could, it seemed like that was not just switching bodies to be the same God. There was actually some switching of roles going on yes. mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. when they needed a role replacement rather than replacing mm -hmm. a God, you know, on this, uh, so it's interesting how they could do that. Mm. But again, Sally and Yama just got that. married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She decides to change sex. And he's like, I'm switching the other team, guys. That's me out. <laughs> my wife's now my husband. And, uh, you know, are you sure you want to do this? The choice has been made. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'm switching the other guys' team, guys. And that brings the whole system down. Like, it's, uh, again, <laughs> we spent so long trying to, to, to you know, to, to marry her or to seduce her. And then uh, <sighs> just married. You can't change bodies. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That. <laughs> Says, hey, I'm gonna bring fire to the heavens. <laughs> this time now. You switch teams, I can switch teams too. That's a wrathful husband. Like, a, you don't want to piss off my reasons to not marry the, the god of death, I suppose. You know, one or one, yeah. even if you're a god of death yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it was a uh, <laughs> but they, they, they explain one of their reasons why the gods don't want to give their knowledge and their their power to the regular people and they say that because they're worried about it once they do that then everybody would be a god and the result that there would no longer be gods only men and they they would they, they in doing so they would destroy their simple faith and remove all basis for their hoping things will be better which is you know a very uh selfish reasoning really uh when you when you think about it but that is the reason for the um opposition to accelerationist and uh it's just uh that you know that's how the gods look at it and it's and it's just uh those kind of little philosophical statements um that he brings out every once in a while is the things that make you think and and uh as you're laughing around the rest of the <laughs> the, the rest of the book you know <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, they had the point. I mean, things would get better for a while, but then what would happen when everyone was a god? You know, if if just with, with a handful of them, the amount of trouble they were having, if it was the entire po population, yeah. Yeah. it's <laughs> probably what it's probably what led to past apocalypses. Mm -hmm. You know, basically. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's something they that had to think about. Yeah, but also this notion that. That's very self-serving, no? That they they lose hope. Uh, they they what what was it again? That they they lose the ability to hope for anything because they're all gods, and that's essentially saying you don't have the ability to worship anymore because like who will you pray to? But yeah, that I found myself resisting <laughs> that statement because like you don't you're assuming that this is the only way people get hope and that, that's just self-serving because you want to be worshipped for whatever reason like you're bored but um yeah it's definitely disingenuous and it's it, mm -hmm. it's uh it's but very selfish that's, yeah that's that's part of the that's whole the whole part of the uh their existence you know and that's mm -hmm. it's part of the charm of the book <laughs> yeah but yeah i i also think it's sort of like it would be nice to have somebody that was devout Hindu or otherwise that does believe in reincarnation and the fact that your soul will be reborn depending on your karma in this life. Because I suppose I was trying to think of it in terms of the way that I was brought up in religion and this idea of heaven and hell, you know, the, the idea of eternal damnation for Catholicism is, uh, is the end of the road for you as well. And again, a lot of pe the fear of that drives people's life. There is a sort of 
idea that you're living a good life so that you can get into heaven at the end of the day. It's mm. much the same way as you scare kids with the coal from Santa Claus. You know, this, mm. this is your chance. I'm phoning <laughs> them. I'm phoning them to let them know that you've been bad. Uh, and that's that's your chance going. So it sort of is definite in, in some religions and, and it's the promise of, of the next life or eternal life that you don't, wouldn't actually die in that case. So maybe, maybe, maybe if you do take that away, because the belief system is so strong, that it does become everything else becomes unimportant at that stage, you know. I don't, I don't know. That'd be interesting well, to know from somebody. Belief system. That, that sorry, go ahead, Susanna. It, it's not so much the the worshiping. I think it's the asp the aspiration of being more than what you are of of uh, you know the 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 ambition of improving yourself. What do you do when you are you know as improved as you will ever be? Yeah. Then you. Mm. But it's a caste yeah. thing, right? You're it's bigger. not. It's not. Uh, it's not a power thing. It's a caste thing. Whatever power they have, it's from wielding weapons. Apparently, like even Agni mm -hmm. has a device to wield this. fire. So, there. If you take away their weapons, they're all exactly the same as the humans. So, yeah, they don't. They get to live forever, and the they get different bodies based on like whatever. Uh, karma sure but but that argument may, maybe it's an admission <laughs> then an advert an admission but that these gods have nothing to hope for because they don't know what to do next but yeah like it i i didn't think that the two were tied but that's a good point that if you worship your gods and you collect your play, prayer slugs then you have something to look forward to for the next life versus yeah, it's all the same. You can get whatever body you want. <laughs> you can figure it out. Maybe, maybe there's a difference there on like what you might strive for. But the the concept of nirvana was briefly touched upon. I in the first epigraph. I don't know if they built upon it more in chapter seven because I, I don't think they elaborated throughout the rest of the book what nirvana meant versus just reincarnation. Like. It you don't reincarnate anymore with Nirvana, but what did that look like in this world? Did mm -hmm. did we find out? I don't remember much about it. Uh, At least no. not on any of the mark pages. <laughs> because again, Brahma, Brahma and Shiva are just gone. The, the, those versions of them are, are are they have been killed essentially by mm -hmm. Sam. Um, yeah. Yeah. And interestingly, there was another god. Um, I don't remember her name. Oh, yeah. Um, but she took on, she had the zombies, the one in charge of the zombies. Nidity or something. I, yeah. And, and she took on, um, you know, the, the Christian aspect. And she mm. was delving into that. And so it, it, it's interesting that he mentioned, because he also mentioned some of the Muslim stuff. At, mm. in that during the you know the second half of the book here and mm. and the Christian stuff and he started to bring in these other ideologies that some of the gods were starting to associate themselves with and be different versions of you know like either fallen either angels or what have you um, as far as uh, changing the names you know just the way that all religions morph into others, you know. So it was mm. uh it was very interesting how that started to come about towards the end of the book. Like there was some sort of change going on. Mm. And uh it's it was very clever because he, he uh he started introducing those changes as a culmination of that final battle. Mm. And and so you start to wonder, okay, well what's what's the future gonna look like with with these new aspects of ideologies and gods in this mm. this weird science fiction world that he, that, yeah. that we're on yeah. here, because um, like another question I had was, what are the Rakashas? Is, are they so, like an alien species? They were the. Um, I was going to explain what Rakshasas are in Hinduism, but uh, they uh, they're just the original mem 
people of this planet. People of this planet. That's yeah. right. Okay. So these okay. guys invaded, locked them up, and called them demons. <laughs> and yeah. uh, there was a nice line there where the Rakasha says, uh, "You to us, you are the demons." Because yeah. you mm-hmm. invaded our home planet. It's, it's Am Legend, isn't it? You know, it's, it's very much that, that idea to borrow yeah, things yeah. from you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, I'm going to jump back here, but the, when uh, Taraka inhabits Sam's body and he discovers the concept of guilt, and because he can't mm-hmm. work out why he's feeling weird and all that, all, all mm-hmm. of this, but again, that exploration of that as a because again guilt is linked to worship as well which is a thing that obviously Taraka and the Rakasha have not sort of encountered if you know what I mean in terms of these deities and they got a sense of that at that stage and he was like I don't like it I don't like it I'm going here and and Sam explains to him actually but once it's like almost like original Cinderella once you've been open to it and experienced it you don't get to turn it off again. It is it is a very concept of being man and worshiping and doing all those things. And I thought there's another like a massively big idea in here that, that's just explored within the concept of somebody taking it over. And then they use it obviously in terms of how Sam is able to escape later on and do all of that, that other stuff. Because when Brahma and Shiva are killed, we know it's Sam, but as far mm. as we know, he's dead. But yeah. we're like, how, how, how is it Sam? We know it's Sam. <laughs> But how did he do it? And it creates that mystery and stuff. So that whole sequence, oh, it was so delicious. I just like this, eating this book off. <laughs> it's so good. I'm, I'm yeah. going to go in on just a wild um, spec- speculation here since we're, you know, talking nice. for an hour. Because uh, the thing that got me hooked on on the book, because I, I, it started well and I was like, oh, I'm not sure. So Sam, he, he feels guilt and is all about, you know, destabilizing saying maybe helping the people maybe not you know it's kind of a trickster um and there's a bit at the beginning when he's a prince and he goes and talks to um the old man that i forgot his name and i can't find it and he says it's a long way to tipperary and uh <laughs> that was what what hooked me because suddenly i was like okay this this is gonna get very weird so <laughs> even though if everything is kind of based in the Indo mythology, I kind of had the idea that maybe it was Catholic. That's why, you know, that sense of guilt mm-hmm. and responsibility and yeah. help others and compassion yeah. and et cetera, that it was ingrained in his attribute. Let's put it this this way. Mm-hmm. And that's what was clashing with, uh, with many of the other you know, gods. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 yeah, yeah, it's infused in there subtly, and the uh, mm-hmm. the um, and it, and you get a sense that all this stuff has played out before. Like mm-hmm. this is yeah. this this is not new. This has been repeated, even mm-hmm. when, like the uh, at the end there when, um, Naridi was talking to his her uh, general there. And told and said, escort this man. I think it was Ganesh, escort this man to where he needs to be or whatever, and release him unharmed. And the general asked her, "Would you trust this one?" And she says, "Yeah, but I'll give him his silver afterwards." And that was a <laughs> yeah. direct, mm-hmm. direct, you know, yeah. re- uh, reference to, of course, to Judas, you know. That's and so, it, and uh, so, you know, it was all in there. It was all infused in there subtly. And and he's just like, okay, I give him his. You know, th- this has happened before, and yeah. and all this stuff has happened before, and uh, I just love that cyclical sense that was going on here because that's that's how a lot of mythologies are. They're, they're cycling yeah. like that. They and, they clash and then they evolve. And, yeah, yeah. You have you have your Ragnarok. It starts mm-hmm. over, and 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 mm-hmm. that's and that's how it goes. You know, it's the Matrix. It's the <laughs> time. It's all of that. It's all it's all of those stories. I had another large note about, again, talking about the topic of reincarnation. And I had completely forgotten this until I read it there. Do you remember Sam runs into his daughter? So Sam runs into his daughter and they have a conversation about the fallacy of reincarnation. Because he said, do you not know why I'm your father? And he says, no, but you've changed bodies so many times. And every mm-hmm. time you're reborn, you become a slightly different person. So you aren't my father. Mm-hmm. You, are, yeah, yeah. you are an idea. Yeah. Your, your legacy is 
a lot of generations ago. So she had no connection to him uh, on, mm. on a level in terms of like uh, passing down kind of responsibility or otherwise. And it was very much no. Yeah. These two things are different. And again, another really big idea wrapped up in a conversation between two people. Yeah. It's like, right, okay, yeah. this is this is the idea of divinity as a tool rather than rather than a kind of well, a parenting as we yeah. as we know it. Well, that's a big idea both on the on the god divinity side but also on the science fiction side yeah like if you can mm -hmm. transfer your consciousness to a bo different bodies on a science fiction type manner would that also have that yeah that's yeah, yeah. that's huge <laughs> i think sorry go ahead, go ahead i was gonna say especially if you could transfer yourself into then like a beautiful body like that would no change you in no ways you, you walk around with your shirt off whereas me now i never doing that you know but if, if i could just get a new body that might change everything about me and i think that's part of what the daughter was talking about is the fact that actually every new body that they go into changes them to a certain aspect yeah. mm. or, or, or feeling, and changes yeah. them a bit further away mm. and I, I think the chapter with uh tuck and maya i think that's the conversation right that was pretty expositionary in that it it also had this conversation about uh tuck reveals that he is um sam's son and he's he has this attachment to him for some reason and that's why he chooses to help him even though apparently he has no ideological similarities with him he just is attached to this fact that he is the the son of this great man uh, who is well known and 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 in that conversation they talk about what it means what uh, parenthood means and uh, I, I didn't notice the the bit that you were talking about, Chris. Maybe it comes after the point where I <laughs> left off reading for this discussion. But mm -hmm. the um, but yeah, I, I thought that conversation was one. Like I highlighted that bit because it brought out the exact same point that you, uh, we are all we change, we <laughs> reincarnate, and the parents reincarnate too. At that point, like how are we related to right. each other, and mm -hmm. what does that even mean? And in that connection, there's also this thing. I think Sam and uh, Kali are having this conversation and Kali asks him, do you love me? And he says, the man I used to be <laughs> loved you then. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that feels like a gimmick at the moment to like <laughs> feel mysterious on Sam's part. But that is a pretty profound statement in the context of reincarnation, like who I used to be. If you think about the Hindu mythology or maybe other religions too now, like with Buddhism and so on. I I, I am not a religious Hindu. Like I'm, I'm, I don't practice Hinduism, but I do vaguely believe in reincarnation. So this idea that the like 10 lives ago, whoever this person loved, that wasn't me. And I, if that person comes back and says, um, Oh, do you love me? That's probably not the answer I'm going to give. Except these guys have the memory of their previous mm -hmm. consciousnesses, right? Which, how does that change? If you could remember everything, <laughs> and yeah, how does that change you as a person? I think that that is a very interesting mm. question. Yeah. And within that same conversation, uh, Callie offers when he says no, and she offers him uh, a virginal body. And ask them mm. if that would make a difference from it. So again, this idea that this daddy God, our powers, are also tempted by flesh, you know, mm. and in much the same ways. And actually, the, the, there is no difference between the gods and man. You know, mm. a, a mm -hmm. lot of times happens a lot, a lot throughout the uh, through throughout the books. Yeah. 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 Well, especially if they're actually just people with extreme yeah. technological yeah. power. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're not, but they're not really gods. That I think that's the, that that right. is actually the point, and, that, and that's that's where sam comes to is like we we aren't any different from from mm. these people that were sort of suppressing in a lot of ways and you know we need mm -hmm. to move on past them so i don't know if zelazny intended to make this commentary but in this version of the story the gods aren't gods they are just people who are playing at being gods mm -hmm. but if you mm -hmm. look at all the mythological stories hinduism and also i think the others gods behave exactly like people so like whatever you find silly <laughs> about these whatever mm -hmm. you're able to find as silly uh because these are people playing at gods i think if you take out that bit it stays silly <laughs> like the, the stories from mythology that he pulled from that are funny or uh 
yeah, I, I, I think that's interesting that you could also read read just how you think of the mythological stories and maybe look at it mm-hmm. with slightly less <laughs> reverence or pay less mind to it too. But yeah, what was genius about this book, like for example, Greek mythology, the gods are like humans because they were created by the imagination of humans. So they have, it's it's, it's not the gods that created us, we created the gods. So they, it, they are as, uh, you know, how the ancient Greeks imagined themselves if they had all these powers, you know. Mm. And this is kind of the same, you know, modern men or, you know, the, what would we humans do with all these powers and then mm. become gods it would just be flawed mm-hmm. it's it's the, the whole thing about mythology this exercise of what would you do with with unlimited power with unlimited technology with yeah. unlimited lives with yeah. all the time in the world uh, mm. bottom line you know the, we would i think yeah that's why we <laughs> just spend the, the whole eternity arguing and and mm-hmm. making deals and uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's our nature or gambling yeah. with demons. <laughs> there were quite a few yeah. scenes in here where I was like, oh, that's like out of a superhero movie, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Superheroes <laughs> are modern day, yeah, our they're, own uh, version of yeah. um, gods. Of gods, yeah. And they're uh, like, you know, Sam's <laughs> trapping one guy in the in the, in the the mud or the, 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 the earth or whatever as he gets away. And it's like... Yeah, you could. Mm-hmm. I could see that in a in a movie, you know, mm-hmm. in a mm-hmm. in a modern day superhero movie. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the the thing between Superman and the Fortress of Solitude and Terrence Stamp's character, I can't remember his bloody name. It's pretty much out of this book as well, you know that that kind of like transfer of power, etc. Uh, one of the uh, one of the other things made me laugh a lot: the, the celestial city in heaven, which is obscured from ordinary people seeing all the rest of it. They they let the people name the rooms different things. So like heart heartbreaking was a room which is where they go to discuss and break up and stuff and uh, the spurs where really they go to, uh, that, was great. that was uh one 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 scene where they were like and they went from heartbreak to despair despair that's yeah, right where they get there, and where they go to have their final act of love before they get judged and stuff right okay yeah. so break up sex right okay I get it nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hilarious! Oh, yeah. so, There's so many yeah. layers. I mean, it's so clever. Yeah. New topic. There were some descriptions of like I, I think I think Zelazny must have gone to India and written observed things to write about these. Mm-hmm. The description of the Kathakali dance. I was curious what you guys thought of that. If any of you looked it up or uh, no, I haven't yet. I was completely lost. (laughs) Tell us, tell us, Varsha. No, that was really brilliantly done, how he described the whole thing. I I have never seen a performance myself, but uh, I want to show you what this looks like and how apt his description was. Can I? Yeah, did that work? See? So Uh, the green, they have this huge billowing skirts and um, the green face mask. and, And I think they are able to move individual facial muscles. They they're trained from very young, like he said, and you know they can. <laughs> the most common one that I'm familiar with is like they can raise one eyebrow at a time separately, and I they can. I can't can do that. <laughs> 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 and they can like move the mouth, and they all mean something, and with the hand gestures, and. And this is something that I really love. The Indian classical dances, they tell they're used to tell stories. So there's different postures that that depict the different gods and um the the state where I am from, it's the main classical dance is Bharat Matyam. This is Katakali. And I thought he did that wonderfully. What the temple looks like and uh the the whole festivally <laughs> uh yeah. feeling in front of the temple where they sell flowers and so on the, what the temple itself looks like the wedding procession of like Kali and Yama's wedding I almost felt like that was just there so he could write about the wedding procession honestly like what? <laughs> um, but yeah I, th- I thought all of those were like really beautifully done the descriptions were beautiful in and of themselves but also I could see the picture forming of like ah that I know that place yeah. <laughs> and it, de- it definitely prompts the idea that if I if and when I do a reread of this, I will go and 
research actually Hindu mythology in a bit more sense. A lot of the traditions that are in there because I do think there are more layers and more detail in there that again I was missing from even you know what was quite a deep read of, of mm. at this stage. There was so much more to get out of it. Yeah, especially yeah. With, the, with the quotes and stuff. You know, that yeah, you want to see where they came from. You want to see, uh, you know, because you know there's different layers going on there. Mm. Yeah. Well, I I've been looking for a reason to to start learning in the mythology. So that, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, and and it, it, to top it all off with all this, all the subtlety and subtext we get in here, and all the layers, and and the humor, it's just really nice prose to read as well. Like you yeah, said, like yeah. like Vasha said, the descriptions and stuff like that. And uh, so I I really uh, I really start to see why some of our modern authors are quoting this guy and. Like you know, this one has this this book has a Gaiman, uh, Neil Gaiman uh, quote on it. You, you guys mentioned Martin quote, and you know, so th you're starting to see why everybody's looked at mm -hmm. his writing as a um, as an influence and as as a uh, something to hold up as a classic. Yeah, yeah. It, because I I can imagine being quite revolutionary at the time, because. I'm, I'm sure some someone mixed mythology with science fiction before, like probably. But to to write a science fiction book almost as if it was a fantasy book, you know, it it, it it's not quite science fantasy. It's yeah. uh, the prose itself is is it's closer to what you would find in a fantasy book okay. um, than sci-fi, and it it just changes everything. And then you add mythology, which is you know fantasy to do to the mix and just yeah genius yeah. i really wish i read it soon <laughs> and, and there's no doubt about it obviously we're reading the wars of light and shadow and i could say this to somebody beforehand there is quite a sense of a strong influence on on johnny's work that johnny works work there it through it throughout this book even in terms of light being lord of light being one of the the main concepts of it the technology disaster that's happened in the past a lot of that mm. stuff and then the elevator prose that's in here uh, that it reads mm. sort of beautifully a lot yeah. of the way through it and and then you get your moments of dialogue etc as you do in johnny's like that's uh I, I think it's it's a clear inspiration in a lot of ways and what what a good template if you're going to do <laughs> use one or you know mm. as as a source for ideas and generation you know sure mm. yeah Yep. And this is, is this what the uh, eighth, seventh book we read? Eighth? Seventh book. Seven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so uh, I'm going to put this at number one. Ooh. Yes. Over all the other ones we've read so far. Nice. It's definitely yeah. one or two for me. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I I meant to do this this week, but I had way too much to read. <laughs> but uh, for next time, I'll I'll make us a tier list template so that uh, we can keep it <laughs> each each month yeah. um that would be fun. All right. <laughs> it, 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 it is interesting to compare because they're not like for like i think that's one of the things that i no. sort of come away from you know yeah. is is that i thought that would sort of all yeah. be because of about a 15 year period of each other to sort of be comparable in some ways and they're really not we're getting a lot no, of very right. different styles of book here yeah. which is great which is really you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of apples or, or apples oranges and cherries and bananas in here so <laughs> indeed yeah. which is the banana don't need to say it this week we've, we've got through the whole chat without mentioning the banana <laughs> that's right that's it yeah what's, what's the banana? <laughs> oh, is yeah. that a comic we, book reference i think that was uh tech well tech, tech well, it, 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 it looks oh. double level because uh tech is is the uh, throughout it but it also if you were talking in terms of our seven books we've read there is a banana skin in the, in the seven reads that we've done so far in terms of the one you might slip up and uh, never read another book again after <laughs> because you couldn't finish it <laughs> no marks for guessing which no which i'm not even going to mention it you know yeah. interestingly no. interesting like we're talking order of like tens of views here okay so like this we can't read too much into it but series in flight part one discussion has the most views in my sf masterworks <laughs> playlist 73 versus an average of like 30 40 like that that's really too small a sample size to read anything into it but i, I was gonna say are you proposing a reread portion no <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> 
I, I already... Maybe people were just curious. What do I have to talk about? <laughs> maybe they're just part one. <laughs> I already threw mine in the fire. Yeah, place. maybe that was. <laughs> <laughs> what do you oh mean? The only God. reason <laughs> that book is still on my shelf is so I can have a complete collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, I moved it to, to the guest swing. We, the house is divided <laughs> our place. And so it, it's for the guests. <laughs> don't like your guests, Suzanne? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we stuff we don't like games or books, so it just it goes to the guests. <laughs> but, but without doubt, in terms of sci fi reads, this is a stone cold classic, regardless of whether it's one, two, or wherever you're going to place it. It is right up there in terms of like brilliant yeah. reads uh, yep. that, have, that we've had. And, and I just knew, as much as I enjoyed reading it the first time, I knew by the time we had this conversation, I would come away just loving it even more because of the, by the different viewpoints that everybody would bring. And it's just it's so true. Every time we go to do this, it's so much fun, guys. Oh, yeah. 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 It was one, it's a very fun conversation. <laughs> Is it the first book that we've all liked, though? Yeah, I think so. We are all kind of yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I think so. Yeah. What was, um, I forget, Susanna, did you like The Forever War? Because I think that's the other one that was universal. Yes, I did. I did enjoy okay. The Forever War. Jared I'm... was mixed on it at the start and then grew to like oh, it, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that right no, yet? Yeah, after talking it out. I was like, okay, yeah, I actually do like this yeah. a lot mm -hmm. more than I. I mean, I didn't dislike it. I liked it yeah. to start with, but I was had I had some concerns, and then after talking it out, yeah, that's what we do this for. We that's talk the fun, about, yeah. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. cool. I'm I am legend. Also, was I mean, I wasn't raving about it, but I liked it, and I oh. think everyone else had a decent opinion of it too, if I remember correctly. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I am legend. Hmm. It's so the uh... past two, and then this. <laughs> But also, in terms of being unanimous, cities of light, nobody liked. So we had the same opinion about four books out of seven. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, to be, yeah. to be fair, Varsha, you've only finished five out of the seven books in this. It's all right. Oh. <laughs> six. I finished uh, six. <laughs> oh, you finished the Nights of Pride's Maid, didn't finish the Nights of Pride totally. I skipped the second part uh, of three. <laughs> part three. So we're even. <laughs> you were even then. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I only... <laughs> Yeah, I, I DNF too as well. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. oh, I think that's going to happen quite a lot, especially as, as some of these books get slightly longer. I mm. uh, it's fine for me. I'll sort of push through a two hundred each page book, regardless of what's happening um, to the end. But once it goes to three hundred, I'm like, mm. yeah. yeah. This this one was up. just on the edge of that. Normally, yeah. and yeah. I think that I I knew this going in, but I still did plan poorly. Most of the SF Masterworks books are 200 pages long. So even if I give myself just three days to read them, I can finish them. But this one's 300 pages long and I still started too late. So I didn't make it to the last chapter. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think overall this, I, I agree, this goes up there. Maybe, yeah, I think it beats out the Forever War for me, which, you know, is saying something that, that's been sort of high on the list and unbeatable mm -hmm. so far but i i love I, I think the difference maybe is the forever war really expands on one theme and mm -hmm. about this book we talked about how using very subtle scenes and little bits of dialogue it does so much like i i have three pages of notes and each one is about Oh, like this this could be its own theme that we yeah. talk about and like there's one about justice over forgiveness on one zero four so this is another another thing like that sf books do uh, or well-written <laughs> ones that the characters say things that i don't always agree with but they make me think <laughs> and i'm like if I don't agree with it, I have to sit back and think about, okay, what about it is, it's not immediately obvious to me. I'm like, okay, what about it is jarring to me, right? Like the thing about uh, the case against accelerationism, for instance, mm -hmm. like you're making sense, <laughs> but I'm, I don't like what you're saying. So I have to think and like really break out what it is I disagree with. I, I, I should encourage you to read some of the the, um, the Reddit threads on accelerationism. It oh, really? Yeah. Bloody hilarious. Uh, the fights. <laughs> yeah. The amount of people that state a point that says, this person has obviously never read any of the texts on accelerationism. <laughs> Please ignore. 
<laughs> it's like, okay. Are there texts on accelerationism? Uh, apparently so. And he says, well, I'm actually talking about a strand one of accelerationism out of the four that are available. No, uh, no clue oh. whatsoever. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that accelerationism is a thing in our world because by definition, this is about a more advanced group giving technology to a less advanced group. And whether it's almost like the... Um, is it cultural relativism argument? Like, do you change a culture and or let it evolve on its own? It's almost like that, except like a very twisted <laughs> form of it. But yeah, it, it's very much about the idea of prioritizing automation over basically any anything else. You know, the fact mm. that you, you mm. and in doing so, you will accelerate. It's almost like the existing system or whatever you're 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 proposing to do that to will uh, sort of eat itself and mm. that it won't be able to, to stop itself once you start automating everything it'll kind of just do away with it which is kind of this again as i sort of see ai coming into this yeah. the moment the capital the capitalist world are so damned to get on the yeah. ai's the money they're gonna eat themselves it's gonna end it. oddly enough oddly enough, that's what this book kind of has in common with a lot of the sci-fi books we read already is that the idea that um technology will be, be something that it will uh to be afraid of like yeah. like mm -hmm. androids in in you know in uh philip dick's novel mm -hmm. it's, it's something that will outgrow and mm -hmm. get out of control and uh it that's a common theme of uh yeah. of, of, yeah. of a lot of the uh 60s sci-fi we were writing we were reading we've been reading here mm -hmm. yeah i i suppose the idea that if you wield technology without understanding the implications of what you're doing like this with ai for instance one thing that i one opinion that i have very strongly is why the hell do you need to deploy it to arts like there are so many things that could be improved by the use of ai but oh, why why are there people out there like oh you know what i i could do with any i i i'll make it write books like there, there are enough <laughs> books to read like you're but just it's... sorry go ahead to to stunt to at to atrophy uh human creativity it's it's exactly i sorry <laughs> i can't go no. there because i get very angry but yeah with so many applications for ai and it go exactly to the arts and that that would just kill our our creativity our yeah this, yeah, this is not yeah. a place that is dying for the use of ai <laughs> no it's not yeah you're right it, like... that's, it, it's like yeah put it to good use you yeah, know, yeah. Where, are, it, like, where it needs it, we don't need it. Hmm. Yeah. Put it where it yeah. needs. It. <laughs> and and even good use, it would it would be dangerous because we are only, uh, you know, as smart as <laughs> up to a certain point. You know, we will never have the computer ability, like for example, with the uh, chess, mm. that we did, because mm. it is a finite thing. There's only so many ways you you can play and win. There's loads of ways, but you know, there's only so many ways. And now you have the perfect player, and uh, yeah, we're never going to yeah. be able to to beat the, beat the machine. And I no, imagine that ev applies to everything. What yeah. is left for us to to do? Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but why put that toward a game? Why yeah, not yeah, put it toward something. Yeah. You know, I lost my camera for a sec, but yeah. So, so my point there was, you know, we're putting AI to use without fully understanding the implications of how this might change society. It's like it's sort of using it because we can. <laughs> Here, yeah. let me show you how to anyway, and and that is dangerous. And I, and I guess in in that way, I do agree <laughs> with the. Uh, what what was the opposite of acceleration is day deists <laughs> but that's not a good doctrine either like let the gods decide everything for you but um yeah yeah i, I think the book is making a great point there whether intentionally or, or not i don't know but yeah, yeah something to think about it's given me something to think about, which is right. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the one quote that I had pulled out of it, that, that kind of again, I wrote it down because I wasn't sure whether you agreed with it. It's kind of exactly what you said, Varsh, in terms of. But I need to pour over it. Was are not worship and religious awe a combination of love and hate, desire and fear? You know mm -hmm. that kind of thought. Ah, no, talk mm -hmm. about it like that. Yeah. You know, it, it said I think it's by Yama. I think says it within within. Thing, you're like, right? Yeah, maybe so. You know. Mm -hmm. 
people feel yeah. they need to be loved or be accepted unconditionally by something, whether it's an entity or otherwise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a combination of, of human emotion. It's yeah. it's what makes it human. I think it's the point of the book, one of the main, or that mm. it doesn't matter how much we evolve though, my own. That we can evolve the technology to a point of you know magic, but we are still going to be humans. Right. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. Oh, we, we can be an ape and still be behaving like a human. We can be a dog and still behaving like a human because that's that's our nature. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah that that's another thing that I loved how this book sort of unashamedly explored there that this idea that it is a sci-fi novel right the but the rakashas are just flames of consciousness i've seen it done in other sci-fi books too but this idea that the consciousness is separate from the body and it can exist on its own and the rakasha taught uh, sam how to do that <laughs> i think yeah that, that that's brilliant and and it ties back to the idea of reincarnation and uh like in the mythology or religion um yeah that that that's one <laughs> bit of hinduism that i can get behind mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah it, it's the exploration there in terms of what it means to have the consciousness outside of the body i think that that was really well done especially by giving us this additional species that exist without a body mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, so much yeah. to explore there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> part two. <laughs> and oh. now he has guilt. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of part two, I, I, I guess he didn't write that sequel, of course, but there's this book called Light. What creatures of light and darkness, in which apparently he's playing with Egyptian mythology. Oh, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. He also, yeah, he also has a book called Lord Demon. So I'm wondering what that's about. Oh, yeah. So, I, have enough, I have enough reading. Thanks for our support, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think that's getting read anytime soon. I, I feel like for books like this, um, I, I kind of wish I had started reading this much earlier because each chapter I would have liked to take a day to read and think about it. Yeah, but so good. maybe I will reread it at some point. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I felt that when we were discussing, you said you were going to do it in two, three days. I, I was like, I. I'm glad <laughs> I was able to pour over it because it, you do get an awful lot more yeah. out of it. I think it yeah. is definitely one of those books because of it. And uh, yeah. maybe, maybe you'll get more to the last chapter, though, having had this discussion and then mm. going to the last chapter. I think that'd be really interesting to, uh, to yeah. explore. She yeah. might come back and say, we got to record this all over again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have thoughts <laughs> and you missed them. <laughs> <laughs> 15 years from now, we'll do the rereads of our favorites. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when we get to the end, we'll like, go back. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> I think Golex is publishing some subs, a subsection of these books. I don't remember what they're calling it. The, the best the, of. Yeah, yeah, the best of. So we we'll do publish. our own yeah. version of that. <laughs> long term plans over wow. long term plans. Yeah. Nice. We'll, we'll see if Cities of Flight's in there. Hope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jared, that's still a mystery at this point. <laughs> I'm sort of very keen to read Case of Conscience, which I think is the next James Blish book that's up. Mm -hmm. It's a lot yeah. shorter yeah. for a start. And um, I'm quietly hoping that that is great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am hopeful for that because there's one, the, my favorite bit was the theology discussion in the first book of Cities in Flight. Yeah. So. Anyway, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. do you have anything else to talk about? Lot of light. So no. it was just go read very it. Enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this yes. is going to stay on my nightstand. I'll definitely. I'm, I'm going to reread it sooner rather than later because I think there's a lot to learn here. Um, yeah. For my own writing and then just for fun, I think there's a lot I missed yeah. and I I want to figure it all out. So uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I. 50 pages in, I went to my Goodreads shelf and marked this as a favorite. <laughs> I'm like, I don't oh, need to nice. I love the writing style. I'm like, I love what it's doing. Even just this one chapter <laughs> is sufficient <laughs> for me to declare it a favorite. I don't care where it goes from here. Good thing it didn't go the cities in flight direction. But anyway. Uh, 
Uh, let's do outros. Chris, would you like to start us off? Yes, my name is Chris Mullins, sometimes YouTuber, sometimes appear on other people's channels. Definitely doing part of the Speculative Speculations podcast and also posting a lot on page two. Nice. Jared. <laughs> and I'm Jared. I uh, run the Fantasy Think a YouTube channel. I'm also on Speculative Speculations and page chewing forums all the time. Mm hmm. You can also find me on the page chewing forums. I spent a lot of time there of late. Or on X as Chronodendrum and uh, my YouTube channel, of course, Den of the Weird. And my books are available everywhere. Timelessness first book is Weird Gods. And I have a new standalone no novel coming up called Oblier next month. So it's available for pre order. Check it out. And I'm Vasha. You can find me on the YouTube channel Reading by the Rainy Mountain. You can find links to the podcast that Chris and Jared mentioned called Speculative Speculations uh, off on the About page. Um, it's currently only available on Spotify, but I will start posting it on YouTube as soon as I make the time to do audio spectrum for them. Uh, if you'd like to read along with us, like I said at the beginning, if you'd like to read along with us for these SF masterworks, either discuss them just on the forum or here in this discussion group, consider joining the Patreon forum. That's where we do all the planning and scheduling. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you in about a month. <laughs> Bye. Bye.